if we could do that. You know, I feel like I delivered my soul. I have released it. And that's, yeah. The burden of the Lord. Okay, you guys ready? How, how do you spell Derek? D E R E K? I think so. That's Oscar. And, how, and Velma, W E L M A. W E L M A. Well, good afternoon. I see you guys were fellowshipping so much with the vitamin K out there. That was good. I mean, vitamin D. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me read to you a scripture before we open up for some of your questioning. And remember, first first line of questions is for clarity's sake you know don't ask the hard questions because then we're gonna have to bring the pulpit back up here <laughs> i'm done <laughs> but li listen to this scripture it's out of second peter and it reads from chapter 1, verse 16. For we did not follow cleverly devised tales when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Yes. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, such an utterance as this was made to him by the majesty glory majestic glory this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and we ourselves heard this utterance made from heaven and we were with him on the holy mountain so you see two different places anyway we were with him on the holy mountain and so we have the prophetic word made more sure yes yes to which you do well to pay attention yes. right. as to a lamp shining in a dark place yes. until the day dawns ah. and the morning star arises in your hearts. But know this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. And no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by Holy Spirit spoke from God. And every time we preach, when you get up to preach, you should be prophesying if you're preaching word. If you get up and read word, you're prophesying. Yeah. Right. Don't prophesy your own dream. Or right. preach your own imagination. Yeah. Right. Thank you. We, we preach what the word says. Yes. And in doing that, we are prophesying. Yes. We are releasing creativity into yes. the atmosphere. Yes. So even as, as Bishop has so labored and deliberated the word to us, broken it down for us, it's not for your ears only, right. but by the will of God, we release it into the atmosphere. Yeah. How many of you know words released in the atmosphere, they stay there. They don't just disappear. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes out, when you pray, you can pray and bind something a hundred miles away. How did that work? The, the word in your mouth is a creative or a judgmental word. A governmental word. It travels like the word of a king. A king speaks a word, then he goes to bed. He doesn't worry while he's in bed if it's going to happen or not. Yeah. Because he's the king. Yeah. That When he wakes up in the morning, that word will have been activated. Well, you are kings and priests in Christ. Amen. That's where you find your identity. Yes. You don't find your identity in your ethnicity. Right. You don't find your identity in your gender. Right. You don't find your identity in your nationality. 
You find your identity in Christ. Yes. In heaven. That's where you record it. That's where your name is written down. Oh, Amen. Amen. Twelve. So that's what what uh, of April, of April. can be a, of great encouragement to us yes. to be bold. That when we speak the word of God, we can know it's done. So we never pray, Lord, will you to heal them? Yeah. I've already healed them, yeah. and I've given you the, 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 the I've empowered you to lay devils, open blind eyes, raise the dead. You heal them. Yeah. The same way we don't pray, oh God, please save my Uncle Joe. Please come and save my Uncle Joe. He's not coming to save Uncle Joe. He already died to save him. Now time for, for you to tell Uncle Joe, repent. That's right. Yeah. Get baptized. Right. The scripture says, command men everywhere mm -hmm. to be saved. Amen. That's what kings do. They command, they instruct. They don't, they don't request something. That's right. Amen. Amen. So, so you have this, this authority, this power in earthen vessels. Invest in you. Yes, sir. You're making me feel really good. <laughs> keep, keep going. <laughs> Is that blessing you? Yes. And who would you rather have preaching? You. <laughs> How did they, who do they rather want to have preaching? <laughs> I'd rather have Bishop preaching. <laughs> because he, he enlarges by demand mm -hmm. my mental capacity in the spirit. But he demands from me, think, think. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, I was not a good student when I was at school. I was a little bit slow. But I mean, you know, slow. <laughs> Mainly because I was lazy. Right. Say that again. <laughs> not, not for his sake, for our sake. But we cannot afford to be lazy concerning the things of the kingdom. Amen. Yeah. It, it it takes a discipline, yes. diligent discipline, mm -hmm. to get the stuff into you. That's right. And regularity. And, and, and regularity. And continuity. And continuity. Yes. And repetitivity. Yes. <laughs> you, the truth is, that's why it's so good. You hear it, you're writing it down, you're taking notes. Then you go back to the notes, you read it. Then you get to the scriptures and you read it. That's how it starts to settle into you. It doesn't just come. It's like an onion. You've got to peel it one layer at a time. And then you have to preach it yep. and teach it. Because you hadn't got it until you use it. So you'll preach yourself into it. Yep. And you'll teach your way into it in, in, in terms of life. So you've got to hear it. You gotta receive it, you gotta believe it, you gotta do it. Then it becomes yours. It conceives in you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got anything on your heart, Gabriel? Because you said back there just all I hear is amen. <laughs> <laughs> please, please don't amen. forget, switch your phones off. Yes, please. Well, since you said that. <laughs> oh Lord! And, he, and then you mentioned the phone. Buckle your seatbelt. <laughs> <laughs> no, what what came to me was concerning the phones, right? And uh, I wanted to challenge everyone to see if we can go one session of this week where one phone doesn't go off. <laughs> but guess what? That's called that's called a demonstration, right? So every, every session we ask, please turn your phones off, please turn your silent, and every session there's phones that go off. So guess what that means? That means when you go back to give it to your people, the same reception and, and listening to instructions will be implemented. So, as it's, so it's all connected to when it comes to the, the things of the old, the old way of thinking, 
the way that we hear, the way that we receive, Good. that's called a demonstration. Mm -hmm. yep. So if, if it's hard for us to follow the simple instructions, right. yep. right. uh, how much more is it going to be to implement this revelation? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Right? So it's, it's everything with the Lord, there's a demonstration. When the Lord speaks, there's an immediate action. Yeah. Yep. And that's called confirmation. So look, the Lord is showing us even through the phones, it's a confirmation of what's coming out as him. If you can receive that. Yeah. And so we have, to, we have to remain, as Jesus said, like children. Mm -hmm. Right? When the children receive, in order to get into the kingdom of heaven, it says that you have to have a childlike heart. Mm -hmm. So when you give something to a child, a child is quick to receive. The child believes what you're telling them is right. true. Yeah. The innocent children. Mm -hmm. They believe what you tell them, they're taking it to the bank. Mm -hmm. It's not until hurts come. It's not until betrayals come. Yes. It's not until abuses come to when then you start. Receptivity starts to get lower and hardened. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? It's good. So yeah. we have to take these principles as children. When the child goes to school for the first time, the child doesn't know anything, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So the foundations that's being put in is going to dictate what type of tree that child is going to turn into. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, some of us, as Bishop has been talking about, and Jeremiah, when he talks about the tearing down in order to build up, that is a literal situation of what's been taking place this whole week. There's a lot of things in us that are being being ripped down, broken down, and the foundation relayed. And like I've been saying all week, it's like trying to drink the sea. So therefore, the practice. Every I, I listen to Bishop in my car. I listen to Bishop as I'm building. If you want me to touch on the master builder. Yeah, I think that'd okay. be great. So, because I've I've offered it. Okay, so I would highly encourage, and just to let you know, so Bishop has a master builder course, curriculum, and curriculum made up of fourteen courses. Fourteen courses. Now, the, it's the the word master. We chose master builder because Paul talks about <laughs> apostles or master builders. Yes. So this is the the fundamental things that any apostle needs to know and ultimately any fivefold minister, any believer. So just to give an illustration of what that looks like concerning the amount of years. So in our local work, my, as I said earlier, my father inhaled and studied and digested this message from Bishop. And then he gave it to us for a course of over 28 years. So in our leadership group, as we started the Master Builder, um, many things had been heard, many things had been taught, but now after a year and a half of once a month going through teaching, I actually had to slow down. So. There's different ways that you can do it. You can just, you can look at the video, watch the videos, and go through and say, I finished. You'll get about 1% retainment. Oh, <laughs> so what I've done is I've went lecture by lecture and, and, has, and have taught it in 15 to 20 minute segments. Now within that 15 to 20 minute segments, there's probably two lifetimes of revelation. And then I've created 10 question test off of each 10 to 15 minute segment. So I pause it at a certain point and I create tests out of just 15 minutes. Now this is to people that have been hearing this message for over 28 years and the average score grading on the test is about a D plus. <laughs> Meaning the accuracy, right? So it's one thing just to go through it and say, we get, we finished it, Bishop, can we get our, our certificate? No, the Lord showed me 
I pause, I rewind, I pause, I rewind, and I get clear, I create the questions, I add, and majority of it is off of my notes that I've taken from watching the videos myself. So I have my notes that I've taken, added to the notes of listening to Bishop teach this for over 20 years, and then out of that, I create the test. Mm -hmm. Now, the accuracy has been starting to build after a year. So we have went from a D plus to about a C minus in yeah. over a year's worth of time of teaching. So we're still on video four. We just actually, we just finished video four. And you heard Bishop said there's 14. So meaning the, the, the we just finished which one? video four. So meaning the meat. So you, the Apostle Paul talks about. Which, which means he's finished the God agenda course. Yes. And maybe another couple. Yes. And so what I've seen is, is people that have, have had, have heard this, but then there's a lot of speech as Bishop continues to talk about um, kingdom literacy and the accuracy of our verbiage. So what I explain to, my, and these are leaders, this is my leadership group that I go through this with. And what I explained to them, I said it's like a sniper, right? A sniper, he has his rifle. Now, that sniper can put his scope on a target, but that doesn't mean the shot is ready. He needs a spotter. He needs to know what the wind intake is. He needs to know the, the, the parameters. He needs to know the dimensions. He needs to have his breathing under control. So meaning, just because there's a target doesn't mean you're going to hit the target accurately. There's many small details that are vital details that go into making an accurate shot. That's how we are to be as ministers of the gospel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Meaning when we, when we minister to someone or we minister to our group or we're ministering to people, there's, a, there's an accountability on our accuracy. Mm -hmm. And what I've seen in our leadership after hearing this message for 28 years and then reteaching this over a year and a half course, our accuracy is starting to rise yeah. within a group, within our leadership team. Mm. So meaning this is not a rush situation. Mm. And if you have the, I mean, I have, and, and let me just let you know, the oldest person in our leadership group is 84. Mm. <laughs> One is 81, another's 83, another 76, two 74 years old and an 84 year old. Yeah. And they're all saying, these are some of the things they heard for the first time. And these are, these are super saints that have been with God a long time. Mm -hmm. And I depend on a lot for, for uh, support, for prayer intercessory, many different things. They're vital pillars in the house. Mm -hmm. But they come to me and they're thanking me and they thank Bishop for giving this curriculum because even in that amount of time of walking with God, they're hearing and learning things they've never heard before. Wow. So if you have the mentality of, I know this, or I've been doing this for so many years, you will miss out yeah. on what God is giving. Yes. So I want to say that to the leaders that it is very, very, if you want, it's, you know, it's when, when you're trying to build the kingdom, and I keep teaching and telling it does no good that I'm the only one that has this and understands it to the point that I do. It does no good. Because all that happens is if there's a situation that one leader deals with and they deal with an inaccuracy, that's double work that I have to go back do and re and re-clean that up and redo it. And there's hurts and there's offenses and there's people that may get leave the work because of hurt and immaturity. All of these things come from lack of understanding and lack of accuracy. So when we understand how important it is to take the time, and especially when we live in a day and age where everyone wants uh, what they call snip baits or uh, bait, bait, uh, clickbait. clickbait. Yeah, clickbait. Meaning, give me all of that in two minutes. 
Yes. I want. I, I, how do I get that now? <coughs> yeah. No. This is a. This is a sit down. And even in even in the the course of teaching this, we've had many adjustments we've had to make. Like for example, um, the day that we choose, we choose this one Saturday of the month, and now the understanding has come. Hey, listen, we need the whole Saturday. It used to be a couple hours, oh, I got this I have to do, or I, because you know, Americans, we're very, very busy. <laughs> and so I have to do this and I have to do that. But now it's, no, no, listen, we're going to take this entire day for God. Yeah. How many hours do we give to our jobs? How many hours do we give to our families? How yeah. many hours do we give to social media? How many countless, countless hours do we give to all these things that are only actually taking away from the kingdom inside of us? If you really want to know the truth. Yep. Uh -huh. Because we're filling ourselves with things that are irrelevant to the building of the kingdom. Right. So I said we need to dedicate, let, let, you know, I know this is very extreme. Let's dedicate one day to God. Yeah. I know that's extreme. The whole day. <laughs> but guess what? After we made that adjustment, accuracy rose a little bit higher. Yeah. Yeah. So it is, it, is, it is a battle to get out of the subnormality. Okay. It is a battle when we're battling subnormality and being in the wilderness, raised in the wilderness, church-wise, to get these things that should be normal, everyday practices, but seem extreme. Yeah. Now, some people, that was extreme for them to take the whole day. And really, it's not. It's very minor. Mm -hmm. But depending on our mindset and how important is kingdom building right to us, yep. and is that our priority? Some of us, kingdom building is our life. Right. And some of us, is kingdom building is when we have time. <coughs> when time permits. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then there comes a, 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 a decision in a, individually in our walks yes. how important it is for us to have God mm -hmm. and have him fully mm -hmm. and then be able to articulate him fully. So I strongly, strongly, strongly encourage every leader to get involved in the Master Builder Diploma. And the point, the, the, the goal is, is, is once the leadership finishes this and understands it, is now teach the people. So when I'm finished with the leadership, then we will open up to the congregation and it won't be me teaching, it will be the leadership teaching because we've duplicated ourselves, yes. yeah. right? We've created disciples, mm. and the disciples, just mm. like from Jesus, they had to be able to give the word accurately to the other disciples mm. to train them to be prophets, apostles, the giftings to equip the saints. Amen. Yeah. So I, I cannot explain to you, you know what, matter of fact, it's like almost every time I go through it, I have to send Bishop an offering because when I see the effect, mm. it's like, how can you not honor the man of God? Mm. For a bishop is, yeah. is taking, we have to understand, <laughs> bishop, just coming here, the amount of hours and days mm. bishop studied. I mean, mm. I hear the after part. When you guys, yeah. when everyone's resting, I'm getting another hour session or 45 <laughs> minute session, right. which I'm used to and I'm grateful because I'm a sponge. I want everything bishop has. Yeah. And then also understanding and appreciating while he's here, get it while he's here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So understanding that there are those that have given their lives mm. so that we can have this. Bishop yeah. is 87. For him to fly here was yeah. brutal. Yeah. Yeah. But yet his love. My brutal. arms are so tired. <laughs> 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 but I mean, it's, these are these are realities, right? Yes. And so, so I'm I'm very grateful to be here. Number one, I'm very grateful to my father for for submitting and 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 um, and coming into the apostolic through bishop and being a faithful, loyal son, and then giving it to us, mm. giving it to me from childhood so that I can be at this place now. Yeah. 
to be able to continue building and continue instilling. So I cannot stress to you how much not only the, you know, the different books are important, but the master builder to get involved, it will transform. And when we, you have people asking how, how can you, how can we do, I, the, master, the master builder diploma is your answer to how. Mm. Far as is it getting broke down into the people so that the understanding can come. Yeah. It's being a student. Paul talks about that, being students. Uh, let me, before she says, let me just say, you know, we have to keep in mind that our people don't live in a vacuum. Yeah. You know, they're not isolated. They live in a secular society. Yes. Mm. But in the, the, the churches, they're, they're, they're having to deal with the th same things you're having to deal with yes. as a leader, with the subnormality. Yes. And so that's what the present subnormality is one of the biggest hindrance for us to be able to, to transform, <coughs> to restore the foundations and reform ourselves. Yes. So keep that in mind. So repetition is part of teaching. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And equipping. I think that's a great question. Let's talk about it. <laughs> no. Yes, Jim. Let's start off with, with what's supposed to be the, the climax of the service is the Lord's Supper. Uh, when One of the last times Ann and I went to Church Subnormal in Blairsville, they had the elements out ahead of time, and then it was time to participate, and we just couldn't. And it wasn't because people are bad. We love the people there or so forth. It just was, it, it wasn't a proper understanding with covenant and celebration. And so, uh, so we know what that, that frustration is. But it, it's, the whole, it's the whole reality of, of the Lord's service. And so what, what Bishop gives and what you know from worship seminar is what, you know, joining the worship in heaven Somehow, we have to do that even on our own. So Ann and I now on Sundays, we basically ascend. 
Everybody listen. So we, just, we intentionally worship the sin. We don't, we don't. John was in exile on an island. Mm -hmm. So he didn't have a local church. But nevertheless, he joined the General Assembly on the Lord's Day. See, this is this what what I've shared is liberating. So, one of that first thing that breaks is is that I don't need a worship leader or someone to play music to help me to get into the presence, because when we sing, whether on key, off key, or in between, you know, strong and wrong, <laughs> the intention of the heart and the spirit is that we, we are celebrating the presence of the Lord. We are celebrating that God is good. We, and we are consciously in the spirit to know the presence of the Lord. You know, the, in, when Moses said in Exodus 33, I want your presence to go with me. God said, no, nah, I'm just going to get an angel. I, I, my angel's going to lead. Just no. And in that he said, teach me your ways. So learning his ways Walking his ways equals walking in the presence. So if he reveals, oh, we enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise, come into his presence with singing. So the scripture gives us access of how we approach uh, the worship in heaven and approach the throne. You don't have to, it's not a matter of how long time it is. It's a matter of your soul, your mind conforming to, the re to ultimate reality in the presence of God. And so we do that with the Lord's Prayer is a, is a model prayer, and it's a governmental prayer. So somewhere along the line in that, there's going to be that. There's also with Scripture, there may be Scriptures that I'll read or that Ann reads. We don't, Ann doesn't sit down in the pew, and I'm up at the pulpit and preach to her. <laughs> Except when we go to Vogel State Park, and there's nobody there. <laughs> but we, but we, you, you, what you know and as we're learning, you do. And the climax for us is to celebrate the Lord's Supper. And so that we, we, and we pray for the reformation of the church. We discern the body in that, Lord, your, your church is broken. We're not, we can't even find a fellowship to worship with because of the brokenness. Yeah. Mm. Lord, help us. Because we're part of the problem, not as much as maybe they are, but we're part. We had to, we had to own up right. the reality of us and of that, that, and we're dependent on the Lord to reform His church. So we participate in Holy Communion, recognizing that not everyone is in the Spirit on the Lord's Day and has ascended and has assessed the situation. That the church is the problem, <laughs> and then participate in the grace that God has, the redeeming grace that is available to all who believe. So there's there's both ultimate reality, there's the reality of, of, of the church on earth, but then there's the reality of the church that Jesus is building, and in the presence of heaven, those who've been made perfect. And so uh, there, there's we we can we can anybody can do it better if you will we're not measuring ourselves on that we're just doing what we know and there is a sense of satisfaction in that we understand what the lord's day is about and that we we pray kingdom prayers and we experience what we know best happens on the lord's day yeah uh, remember that the the lord's prayer is a pattern you know, Young Gi Cho called it a track mm -hmm. for us to run on. And my wife and I do the same thing. We use, I will pray the Lord's Prayer. Um, as an outline. We kind just... of as a conclusion. Mm -hmm. So we're praying in accordance with God's ultimate agenda. And, uh, and we're, we do it in general assembly. Now you, what he said is, you know, most churches are not churches. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, don't lose the victory. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they don't have some good things. Right. I'm not saying they don't love the Lord. But most of them don't really have government so no. that the people are in allotments. Right. And then they, many, many churches aren't even spirit filled. That's right. I'm trying to help and help him answer your question. Mm -hmm. That what you're dealing with, you don't have an allotment yet. You haven't found placement yet in that city. Mm -hmm. You've got some related brothers and sisters, but your placement in God is here, yeah. and with with others who are part of His sphere. So you've become translocal. Now, God could use you to gather some people to start bringing to people together, mm -hmm. and you lead it. Mm -hmm. Or you could find, talk to them and find a, a, a place where you can really have freedom to, to do what you're supposed to be doing. But there's not anything wrong until that happens. I mean, John was in exile. Right. Nevertheless, he joined the general assembly. When the writer of Hebrews says in, in, verse, in chapter 10, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, he's just told, or he's getting ready to tell us what that assembly is. Mm -hmm. If people are only assembling in their congregation, they're in a divided situation. That's subnormal. What I'm saying is, you don't have to endure that. Now, ideally, we get the, ho the house of God in order. Mm -hmm. yes. So we have local allotments of believers, mm -hmm. local churches. Mm -hmm. Not a single allotment, but a, a whole city mm. of allotments mm -hmm. that are properly connected to the Lord in the spirit and to one another under valid government mm -hmm. that understands the order, the Lord's day and the order, the, the liturgy. You can begin to practice that liturgy in your own Lord's day as you enter in. That's why I laid out, I laid out a liturgy now, his work is, is trying to follow that liturgy. Uh, other of the, of the allotments that are under, have been under my uh, oversight, my apostolic leadership, uh, are trying to restore, implement the Lord's Day service. Yes. And uh, like I said, my wife and I, we, we take... We eat from the table of the Lord every day. Amen. Because I'm 87, and I can't tell you how old she is. Because <laughs> if, if the word gets out, I'm in trouble. <laughs> and I'm a dead man. <laughs> but so, but, but you know, we're receiving the grace of God. That's why I'm here. I'm able to be here. Yes. Amen. 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 Because I'm believing God to renew my youth. Amen. And to walk in divine health. Hallelujah. And to live many more years. Amen. Because there are books to be written. Yes. We need tools. Yes. We need a new glossary yeah. of the yeah. kingdom. So we, we all have the same vocabulary. Yes. You know, one of the, the goals of, of, of ATS, I mean, ATS is not just a lecture place. Right. It's not dis just disseminating uh, uh, information. It's implementing mm -hmm. and developing resources. And so out of one of the courses that, that we'll be developing on uh, administrating the new covenant. Mm -hmm. Everybody say that. Administrating, administrating the, the new, new covenant. covenant. See, once you understand that the... the, the the apostles and fivefold ministers take the place of the chief priests and the Levites. Mm -hmm. 
So we have to administrate. We have to first bring them in, bring them out, and bring them in. Then we have to structure doctrine and order church life. Yes. And teach them the ordinances and the statutes. So people have to be trained about Lord's Day worship. You couldn't even teach what I shared today in most congregations. No. So I, what, look, what we've been talking about is impossible. Mm -hmm. I'm the first one to admit it. That is to say, it, because of the present condition, all of the resistance and you know, the status quo, It's awful losing your train of thought in the middle of an important thing. Yes. Anyway, you following what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. So. Uh, you were saying it's impossible. Yeah, thank you. So it's impossible in the natural. Yes. But it's not impossible for God. Right. And it's not impossible in the spirit. And right. it's not impossible with the word. Right. The Revelation 19 is not a vision of Jesus coming for the final judgment. You, for one thing, it follows the general assembly that takes place as the whole church enters into the wedding feast. And then, you, then John sees the, the rider on the right horse. This is back to Revelation 6. Having conquered, wait, when did he conquer? Ascent and ascension. See, people aren't even going to understand if you don't teach them. So having conquered, now he's riding forth to conquer. And guess who's riding behind him? His church. We are riding on white horses. And there's a sword out of his mouth. He's judging the nations. Yeah. That's the present administration of the kingdom of God. He's dealing with the nations on the basis of the word of God. Right. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. I'm just excited about this. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, Abraham Lincoln loved to listen to preachers who preached like they were fighting bees. <laughs> And on his thigh a name is written, and that name is the word of God. So what Revelation 19 is a vision of the victory of the gospel over all of God's enemies. Yeah. And the, 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 the salvation or the discipling of the nations. Yes. And filling the whole earth with... This is why we got to recover the book of Revelation. Yes. It's been stolen from us right. by a thief and a robber mm -hmm. who's turned it into a bunch of tares right. who are postponing. What John was seeing is what the Lord had done and what he's doing. Right. God's agenda for the present administration, which... How many understand that God's agenda for the first century or for the 21st century is no different than his agenda for the 21st? For, for the first. For the first. Yep. Did, are you hearing what I'm saying yeah. to you? Yeah. So don't look for new ways. Yeah. First, follow the pattern apostle. Yeah. And those original apostles. And then begin to raise up apostolic companies. And covenant communities, local expressions of the one general church, and then begin to equip the leadership. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Bishop. There's a quick answer for yours. Do what you know to do, and don't do what you know not to do. Yes. yes. And the in-between, ask Holy Spirit. Yes. So, should I go to this revival meeting? Yeah. You know, he'll give you clear direction. 
the, da the danger is we don't need a revival. That's right. We need a reformation, a reforming, a restructuring, and a reordering, both of church and of church life. Yeah. And we you know, need if, to be delivered if, from the present subnormality. Yeah. Yeah. When it says not forsake, that's what I was trying to say. That's talking about not forsaking the general assembly. Yes. Well, if you go to most of these local churches, they're not going to be in general assembly. And you're going to be frustrated with their order of service. Right. For one thing, they usually don't let the spirit move. Yeah. 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 That's right. what, what happens is when people are revived, they are excited for a short time. Mm -hmm. But if, if Brian was to fall down dead or here oh, from a heart you. attack, and we took out the pedals of life and we jolted him, he would be revived come back breathing but the thing that killed him is still living in it <laughs> and so that's the danger with subnormality we revive them but what killed them in the first place is still living in them so that's why they need to be delivered yes pastor Raymond, question now another question i do want to make a question of kingdom you will always be frustrated yeah that's right yeah it will not be the same that's right. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, mm -hmm. there's freedom. Yeah. So, 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 the kingdom of God, if it's anything, it's relational. Yeah. And when we relate as kingdom <coughs> citizens, the key is we come together in love. So yeah. when family come together, there's always a celebration. Right. So yes. when we as the citizens of the kingdom of heaven come together on the Lord's day. We come together to celebrate one another and ultimately to celebrate our Lord and King. And, and, the, the and, and his general church. And his general church. And that brings about the kingdom of God is first of all righteousness. So when we as a family are in right standing with God, righteousness, then there's peace. So there must be peace amongst us. So when we come together, we come in peace. And ultimately, <laughs> righteousness, peace, and joy. That is why when we come together, there must be joy. There must be like, you know, because that's kingdom. So, so the, the joy of the Lord is our strength. It binds us together. And so I believe that when you come into an atmosphere where there's no love, oh my word, then you have a big problem because it says here, if we love our brothers and sisters who are believers, it proves that we have passed from death to life. When we love our fellow believers, it proves that we have passed from death to life. But a person with no love is still yes. dead. So when we are in an atmosphere of dead people, we will always be frustrated. Yep. So right. just, just for clarity, because we want to make sure terminology, kingdom is relational, yeah. it's covenantal, covenantal, it's governmental. Yes. So, you know. So and it's universal. Yeah. Or JJ can start on a Church. She can. I've got, I've got to remind you, I've already said that if we preach the kingdom, if we preach the kingdom, yep. I'm waiting to get everybody's yep. focus. If we preach the, ki the kingdom, we will get the church, church. Yes. Right. which will be one church made up of many. Yes. Right. But ultimately, we all gather together in the general assembly in the New Jerusalem, in Zion, wow, wow. on the Lord's Day. Amen. And if we preach location, the church, we get religion. Location by location, allotment by allotment, city by city, Region by region, you know, 
Let this process, let this work in you right. until it's life and you see it. Right. Now, we're not there. Right. Yeah. So we're going to have to be loving yeah. and patient. Yes. Yeah. And we're going to have to speak the truth in love, but we're yeah. going to have to speak the truth. Right. Right. We're going to have to confront. Right. Right. And we're going to have to reform. One of the wonderful things that, that Jesus comes clearly he says the kingdom is like yeast yeah. or like leaven. Right. So you put a little bit in that religious lump. Mm. Give it time. <laughs> it'll spread. Yes. So, so you want to be you. The, the best you you can be as a kingdomite. Right. In every situation you present yeah. yourself. Do you remember what you said exactly to your daughter? Yes, sir. Repeat it for all of us to hear. Do that's, what that's you know to do. Counsel. Do what you know to do, and don't do what you know not to do. And then for the in between, ask Holy Spirit for direction. Take okay. it to the Word. And I'll say it a little bit stronger. Don't become a collaborator. Mm -hmm. Don't be a facilitator. Right. Don't be a partaker of the present subnormality. Yeah, that's right. That's good. Yes. Yeah. Can I add to, to it in the discussion? Because I think, so, yeah, for me, I understand, I understand that direction and structure, and I receive that. But beyond that, even as the prophetic nature, if the enemy of best is good, then religion and subnormality, it's not only, if I look at out my the battle to kingdom, it's not evil, it is the current condition of the church, yeah. which we spoke about. Right. So what then is our responsibility? Do we just stick to truth and kingdom? Or is there something, this this frustration that I feel, is there something that, if in, in America, if you see a man abusing a woman in a parking lot, or a child or something, most of the, concept, the perception is, I don't get involved. When it comes to the things of the kingdom, because it's governmental, and my job is to extend the scepter of the kingdom as the church, then when I see something that is religion being that God that's antagonistically violent against the things of God, then what do I do about it? Do I respond, or is it not our business and we stick to just truth will tell its own story? He wants to share, and I'm sure others will share. What earned taught us was you go first to those where God last moved. That's why they went first to the Jews. Mm -hmm. So we need to be reaching out to subnormal church. That's why, you know, we've had pastors gatherings and, and uh, we get open doors, opportunities to share. Of course, the writing on Facebook. There are many places to share. Uh, but you, know, you, you mentioned your prophetic gift. So I think it would be good. You need to seek the Lord where he would yeah. have you yeah. go and yeah. become salt and light and an influence. Yeah. Brother Jim has been doing this with the pastors in his region. That's, I've always done that. But you're not going to build with them. No. Yeah. So, you know, Jesus said, when you go into a city, yeah. you minister. Right. And if they reject you, you kick off the dust of your feet. Yes. Now, nobody believes that today. Right. Because that's harsh. Yeah. But we keep going to the same places exactly. and the same people right. and speaking to the same people who've already said no. Right. Yeah. And so it's time to move on. Right. And if we keep <laughs> moving on, we'll find those with ears to hear. Those yes. whom God has God's already prepared their hearts. Yes. And they have ears to hear. Mm -hmm. And eyes to see mm -hmm. and hearts to believe. Mm -hmm. 
Great. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think also we, we, as is evident from this now, we're still battling with our pattern, with our structure, uh, yes. our terminology. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if we can just focus on that, yes. and become that light, yes. and then obviously people looking yes. in and saying, hey, but there is something yes. there mm -hmm. that is working, and yes. why is it not working here yes. with us? And but, but you have contacts beyond that. Yeah. And her dilemma is, she's got anointing and grace, and she doesn't know whether, how, what, what she should be doing right now. But she doesn't have what you're talking about. Right? Is that what you're saying, dear? I just want to know how violent we could get. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to minister in love. And you have to be sensitive. Yeah. Look, you have to be able to discern by the Spirit where yeah. people are. That's right. That's right. And, you know, again, it's by grace. Yeah. Through faith. Mm -hmm. And not of ourselves. Yeah. And so, you know, we're talking about in principle. But in practice, the Holy Spirit, we have to follow the Spirit. And yes. let the Lord open the right doors That's right. And, and, and release us. Yeah. I don't go everywhere sharing what I know. No. Yeah. no I go where the Lord sends me. Yes. And where there's receptivity. Yes. And I will keep going there as long as they continue to receive. Right. If they reject it, Dust the I won't visibly do anything with my feet, <laughs> but I won't go there anymore. That's right. Why? Because there's too much ground to come. That's right. That's right. There's too much work to be done. That's right. You know, a lot of us are still trying to reach the unregenerate church. That's right. Who are steeped in things that have already caused their ears to to be deaf, their yeah. eyes to be blind, their their hearts to be dead towards the life of God. Yeah. But there's many who've never heard, yeah. who are waiting. And so we, we've got to be sensitive to the word of the Lord. Go. Right. And that was what was prophesied over one of the brothers. And we sang to it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a practical example. What that does. You know, one of the things I try not to do, and it's difficult because I, I'm passionate and I believe these things. I mean, this is, I've swallowed the hook. Right. You know, hook, line, sinker, pole. <laughs> and the fisherman. <laughs> so all of this is in my gut. Yeah. But I'm sensitive. I don't want to come across as strident. Right. I don't want to strive with people that I'm, I'm, I'm talking to or ministering to in my own flesh. Occasionally, some, I get an opportunity to talk to somebody on a plane. Yeah. Who asks me questions. Right. <laughs> And that becomes an open door. Yep. Yeah. Now, at my age, oftentimes, I just want to be Let's quiet. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, don't, I hope these things help us. Yeah. It, he's going to keep coming in and out. Right. I want to come back to, to what Brian, what, what, you, what you started saying, you need to finish it. But in, in your specific houses, you have to work at developing kingdom culture that's right. yeah, with word. kingdom language. That's Excellent. Right. And, you know, that's... When, when I first came to pastor in Kempton Park, um, Theo Volmerance was running Christian City. Everybody that came out of Christian City, you greet them, hi, how are you? I'm blessed. Yeah. Yeah. To the point it is like, please, man, I want to slap you. Be real with me, you know? But what they were doing... Out of that faith movement, yeah. they were they were getting a language yeah. that was identifying them 
establishing a culture out of them. Mm -hmm. Good. So that's what, you, what, that's what we want to work at in, in specific house. We, we learn kingdom language. There is particular kingdom language mm -hmm. that we do need. That, that's what Bishop's on about continually. We need to develop a glossary. Yep. So we all say the same word, the terminology with the same meaning. Yep. Right. Because today you say apostle or kingdom, there's a hundred definitions that's right. for them. Our definitions in, in, in our kingdom understanding should be the same because they need to come out of right. word understanding. Yes. So... That's the task that, that you face now, is to, and it, it takes time, yes. but you'll be surprised how quickly mm. yep. stuff will, will catch. Yep. And it catches with the young people. Yes. How quickly it catches. That's when that right. happens, you become the light in region. You right. say, well, they all talk the same language. That's they right. talk in the same language. Where do you come from? Why are you saying that? And mm. that's what you want to work with. Right. Uh, and does that finish your question? You had more to your question, I think. Well, let me before we, if we leave what you're saying, already in a many of the songs are kingdom truths. Mm -hmm. A lot of the churches are singing the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a forerunner. <laughs> that's the prophetic. Well, um, I hear what JJ is saying because there's a new, there's a culture that is, that is, um, that we're starting to see happening, especially in Cape Town where everybody is now looking at the, the, the instrument and the bands and the bands and the, the, the singers, the lineup singers are becoming bigger and bigger and the graphics is massive and it's all, you know, new technologies and so that is where everyone is striving. So you walk in there, I mean, in some churches uh -huh. they get a poem for their, for, their, for their message. They just read a poem and that's the message. Uh -huh. Lord but all of the other stuff is appealing to the young people. So you walk in there and you, you feel, ah, you got, we invited, some people invite me to their churches, but you already know you're going to waste your time. Why must you go there? Because it's, it, there's nothing. It's all of the, the, the stuff, but there's no, there's nothing there. I'll give you an illustration. I'll come to you now. When I was a youth pastor with doc, Dr. Fred Roberts, I was his youth pastor before he left the Full Gospel Church. Every youth group had entertainment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was naive. I said, hallelujah, this is my opportunity for being the pastor. So I was the pastor to those young people. We had church on Friday. We sang. We pr I always preached. And then we would play. Other guys were all playing. My youth group grew and grew and grew. Mm -hmm. Because you think that they want a poem. They don't want a poem. They want a message that yes, of authenticity right. that comes out of a heart of reality. Right. Don't under, whatever they're presenting and the people are clapping for it, don't think that's what the people want. No. Yeah. You know, I don't want to say it ugly, but they are wrong yeah. in doing that. The people are hungry and the people are ready to receive. Yeah. People, it's, a, it's the heads that don't want to receive it. Right. But the body is alive to receive a kingdom message. Right. Yeah. The scripture says deep Call us to the deep. That's right. So the word we're carrying answers yes. to the cry yes. of the human heart. Amen. Now that nations, even though they don't know it, are crying, for, uh, are groaning for the sons of God to come. Yes. That's right. For the manifestation of the kingdom. Yes. yes. Uh, there's so many different things that came out that the spirit was given references to each number one is when you said uh, I'm being invited to go to other church but I don't want to waste my time no I'd encourage you to go and give them the kingdom message because either they <laughs> oh okay well then that's different now if they, if, they, if they invite you to participate and they want to hear you speak then yes I would go and I would release the kingdom. But I understand your frustration because, number one, the prophetic and the apostolic are married. So being a child of a true apostle, you know, Bishop touched on it. And when I say touched on it, that could be two hours. <laughs> but he, he, he really didn't get to get into the placement as he wanted to. 
but the answer to majority of number one, your the, the dynamics of your question and the things that are coming out is placement. Yeah. And I can give testament to that from different experiences is, is number one, especially in America, you, you talk about they read a poem, people go to church by the thousands and they have a, a projector screen and the message comes on a projector screen, no one opens their Bible, there's no preacher, and they get the message and yeah. then the praise and worship team does their deal and there's the service. And they take tithe and offer. So, where, where can I find that? <laughs> <laughs> Calvary Chapel? No. <laughs> uh, so, so number one is is when I went to France to play football. Now, me, I'm, I'm I I thank God every day because you're big. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you Thank don't you. have to rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> I thank God because being born in placement, right? I didn't really understand what that was. Well, I understood what it was to a point of that's all I knew. But when it became a reality to me, reality to me is when I went to France to play ball, it was the first time in my life that I was out of my, the house uh. of God that I was born and placed in mm -hmm. by divine placement. So even on Sundays when I would tune in with the services streamed and join in, go into the assembly of God on Sunday, it was still a different <laughs> dynamic of being in my post and where God placed yeah, me yeah. And, and, and operating in my gifts submitted to the apostolic. Come on. So there was a dynamic between me and my father that a power I can't explain to you. Mm. And being separated from that, it was one of the most, the hardest, difficult things of my life. Mm. And then on the next dynamic, when I went to Brazil to play ball, I actually was able to join with a, a, an allotment, a local allotment, which I still would go and ascend on Sundays with our allotment and the General Assembly. But I was able to physically go into an allotment to where they didn't speak any English. But the Spirit of God was there, mm -hmm. and the order of service, it was minus religion. So I was still able to partake and have that anointing and have that gratification of the love <coughs> that I know, but I wasn't physically in my post. Uh, good. But then when I got back home, mm. there was so much more appreciation mm. of being blessed, of knowing there's millions of Christians that have that same frustration. Yeah. There's yeah. millions of out of place Christians. Yeah. Mm that don't know that dynamic or have never experienced that, yeah. right? So what my father taught and what I teach in our local allotment is, is this is not the one man, he man show yeah. where everybody comes on Sunday and listens to the great prophet. That's mm -hmm. not how it works. Right. And then also to answer your question, when you said about the religious structure the religious structure, what that looks like is, is okay, at 9 o'clock we're doing this, at 10 o'clock we're doing that. We don't have time for the Holy Spirit to come in, but at 11 o'clock we're doing this. As a matter of fact, that's two hours, so we went too long. We got to cut that back down to an hour because we need to appease the flesh, the soulless Christian, right? And so in our allotment, what, what we do is, is number one, I allow the Holy Spirit to do what he wants, now, I'm the overseer of that service, and it's my job to conduct the order of the service as the Spirit allows to what he wants to do. So meaning, if the Spirit wants the young man, Daniel, who's sitting behind the camera, to come up and give a, a, a tithe and offering testimony, I'm going to stop what I'm preaching and have him come up. But if I'm in tune with the Spirit, the Spirit would tell me he wants that to happen before I even get up to minister. Right. And so what happens is when I leave the house, I explain to my people, it should be as though, because we had a long time to where when my father was gone, it would have this sense of, 
church was good, but it wasn't the same because Bishop uh, wasn't there. Mm, wow. Or then, or I'll get messages, mm. Prophet, you mm. know, it wasn't really the same because you wasn't there. So what I, I won't go and say, yeah, you know what, it's not going to be the same because I carry the power, so it's going to be a little different when I'm not there. No, <laughs> yes. I immediately yes. adjust that mind of thinking right. and say, there should be no difference if I'm there or not. Yes. So that means there needs to be a renewing of the mind yeah. Yeah. of the service to understand you carry the power just like me. And matter of fact, my job is to bring you the gifts God has given you to the maximum. And so what we do is, is, is every person, matter of fact, when there's, a, when there's an obedience on the word, right, there's an immediate product, meaning there's an immediate production when, when the word is given, like when the word is given here and a seed is sown, there will be an immediate action from that because it's God. So when that happens at any point, at any one in the allotment, I have them come and get up and give that to the people so that guess what they see? Oh, it's not just the prophet that operates in this. But if you obey on the word, it will manifest. And then also to show, hey, guess what? You may view this person as no one, but God just showed he's no respecter of person. Right? And so it's a train. That's why I said I very highly encouraged because when... Apostle Dave talked about kingdom culture. That's what's happening with the master builder. It is creating kingdom culture, dynamiting out of subnormality. You understand? And so, and as for you, you will be frustrated when you're not with him. That's just automatic. (laughs) It's just how it works. When you're the daughter or the son of an apostle, that's our post. And I would say, wow. spend as much time with your dad as you can. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm, I'm so glad he shared that because it brings back memories of when I played quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, many, many of us <laughs> have lived a life of displacement yeah. or being out of joint. Yes. And most of those that are in, in subnormal, subnormal church are that. they displaced or they're out of joint. Yeah. Do you know, if, if I put my shoulder out of joint a while back and they couldn't get it in. They three people. You can't put something that's out of joint back into the right placement gently. No. Mm-hmm. You can't do it gently. No. So there's some people you can't help, like even some of us that are sitting here, the word that Bishop's giving is a word to kick you into right placement because you can't do it gently. Yeah. And, that, and that's what we struggle with sometimes because we want to be loving and kind and just introduce them to something. Yeah. But the, the, the terminology used, we want to dynamite them out of subnormality into the kingdom. It's not gentle. So, uh, Pastor John. Thank you. <coughs> Sorry, Pastor John, just before you start, I think that's CJ walking in. We want to just pray a blessing on him. Yeah. Because yeah. he catches a, a Uber now at 4 o'clock. Is he gone? I think he's just by the door there. Yeah. While, the, while he's coming, what Dave was saying about it, you, you, you can't gently put a, a joint back in place. It made me think it's the scripture that was quickened is you shall know the truth mm-hmm. and the truth will set you free. Many people in bondage That's right. to religion, to false doctrine, wrong tradition. Yes. And you're not going to set them free by going along with it. The only way you're going to set them free is by speaking the truth yeah. in love and in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the power. As the Lord directs. Amen. Pastor John. Well, if the truth sets you free, what do, what do lies and deception do? Uh-huh. Say again. If the truth sets you free, what do lies and deception do? Yeah, they enslave you. Enslave you. you. So coming back to what Brian was saying about ministering in the local house, I think it's 
think it's better to, that we take what we're getting. I mean, we've got a whole giraffe here. There's a little that says, how do you eat a giraffe? One bite at a time. So you've got this, you've got this, I mean, this tremendous revelation. And for some of us, we've learned it many times and we have been put in remembrance, which is a good thing, because every time you write, you are, you are imbibing, it, you are allowing the word to become incarnate yeah. in you. So you speak it out. So my, my, my advice to the house, or my recommendation is, you know, first invite this into your own system. Make sure, as Bishop said, whatever he's got is given to us and we must make it our own. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And the yeah. only way to do that is for you to study, for us to study yeah. it, yeah. and go through it over and over until, yeah. you know, you, you fairly know it. According to educational psychology, you need to review something at least six times before you understand it. Say it again. I'm saying, uh, I, was, I was a student of psychology many yeah. years ago, but one of the things we learned was that in order for you to understand something properly, you need to review it at least six times. Mm. All right? So for some, it may be more. <laughs> <laughs> like our slow brother here. <laughs> no, I was, I was commenting about the day in, in the men's room that he's got a fantastic memory because he's able to track things and bring things into alignment. I thought that was great, but he said he was very slow in school. It's important for us. He was, he was he bored was with school. <laughs> Okay, I'm saying in the local church, you know, where we are, if we have oversight of our house, to take this and bring it in bite sizes. Yes. Like for me, our congregation is used to listening to me teach or preach for an hour. You know, they don't move, they sit there, listen. And uh, what is called projection board needn't be the demon that we make it to if you use it properly. Yeah. You know, I have an outline. Okay, so I started teaching on the non-negotiables last year already. And right now I'm only for number five, which is the church of Zion. And I'm stuck there for many, many, many weeks. I'm still dealing with that Ephesians passage, mm -hmm. you know. So I'll tell you something else just to illustrate. Many years ago, well, not so many, I had a denominational speaker come. I brought him not because of the preaching, I brought him because he was good in, in healing and deliverance. But before he did this, he brought his stuff, you know. And uh, I have been dealing, especially with my young leaders, with these uh, negotiables and all this for many, many years, since I got him, you know, way back, I think about 15 or so years ago, when you were at Glenn's, Glenn's church with the Lord and the other. Yes. So I've been teaching that all through the years. So this, this denominational speaker had all his materials in the back. You know, his books, his tapes, <laughs> his videos, and all that. And people were going, and especially the people that I've been discipling, they've been looking at it, glossing over and walking. Nobody bought any material. I didn't tell them don't buy it. You know, and then he remarked to me later that nobody's buying the material. And I said, don't worry, I'm going to give you an offer, which I did. You know, so that actually made me quite joyful that yes. people had a grid by which to evaluate yes. what they were listening to and so forth. So I just want to encourage us if you take it slowly and be consistent and invite it yourself and teach it slowly, but they soon, they soon going to grab the vocabulary that we're talking about and they're going to start talking about this. And so, the outline. Yes, the outline. So, so be encouraged. You know, I know it seems overwhelming, but it's not impossible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just stick with it. Yeah. You know, a hammer doesn't take the nail in with one, one blow. That's right. So you keep hitting it. Anybody else with a question for clarity's sake? Otherwise, we're about to, to break because we don't, we don't need to prolong it. But um, so you'll have a nice time of fellowship before the Shishanyama. Are we going to have tea or we going to Yeah, we, we do have tea at 4 o'clock, I think. Yeah, that's in two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'm not going to this up in yes or no because I don't want to keep us unnecessarily. I was wondering why he has an agenda that we have a time frame that he knows when the church will have done its job and everything is, is perfect or it, does it depend on us? Uh, 
Well, that's a good question. Next time I talk to him, I'll ask him. <laughs> no, he hasn't given us that. He hasn't given us that information. We have a we have a goal, yeah. so we know when we've accomplished or we've arrived, and that's once we've all come to the unity of the faith yeah. and the revelation or experiential knowledge of the Lord, mm -hmm. and grow up Him to the head as a mature man, and thereby the full stature of Christ, thereby we possess that which he's head over. Yes. Our inheritance. So it's an excellent question but because, and the answer is disappointing to some people. God knows that. Yeah. 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 So I'm sure he knows, uh, but we can, we can hinder the fulfillment of his plan and purpose because of obstinacy yeah. and stiff-neckedness and right. pride and, and so forth. We, no, we can, mo most of the church doesn't know the things that we've shared here. We, we don't need to be waiting on God. He's waiting on us. Yes. Yeah. You know, so that's why it's so important for us to, to get on track and, and let's do it. You know, the sooner we do it, the sooner others will pick up and then it'll, right. it'll, begin to, it'll mushroom and the church will start doing what the church is supposed to do. Yes. And Jesus can say, okay, they're doing what we sent them. Yes. Listen, it's not your job to measure success. Right. right. Thank you. It's Amen. your job to be faithful. Yes. Yeah. And do what he's commanded you to do. What he's appointed you and anointed you, established you to do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so what's required in his stewards is faithfulness. Yes. Mm. Yep. No, I learned so much from Brother Ern, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. But the greatest lesson I learned from him was watching him. Mm. His prayer life. Mm -hmm. He was a worshiper. And he took his assignment very seriously. Mm -hmm. He had a great sense of humor. But he was totally sold out. Amen. And uh, so what I learned was what it means to be a servant of God. You're not the servant of your congregation. Right. You're the, their servant for his sake. Yes. But for you to fulfill your service to him, to them, you have to do, you have to be obedient to the Lord and yes. faithful in your service. Listen, that ought to relieve you of a lot of things. Yeah. Not everybody's going to receive what, what he's given you to share. Right, right. Amen. CJ, I know you've got to run. He was lost. <laughs> Is that the Brazilian? Yeah. <laughs> CJ, don't when you want to come and stand here in front of Dr. Jim. Yes. And uh, CJ's on his way back to Brazil. And I know that what he has received during his time here is life-changing and impacting. And we want to just pray the blessing of the Lord on him as he goes. And he becomes a clear mouthpiece. Yes. In Jesus' yes. name. Hallelujah. I lay hands on him. You, he, you lead, in the lead name us of in. Jesus. Is he going to lead us? In yep. Prayer? In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for yeah. CJ. Yes, yes. I thank you for his heart that yes. bows before you. Yes. Yes. I thank you for a heart that hungers for you, yes. for more of you. Yes. I thank you for a heart that wants your will only. Yes. Yes. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray for clear yes. understanding through revelation knowledge yes. that as he walks in the step in the ways of the Lord that his steps are ordered according to the Lord yes. and that he's led by your Holy Spirit yes. Lord help him to be patient and persistent yes. in yes. devouring your word yes. with yes. revelation knowledge Hallelujah. grant yes. grace yes. to him yes. for the 
will call upon his life. Yes, yes Lord. That he may find direction yes. after direction after direction in Jesus' name. And I pray in the name of Jesus, a prosperity upon him that allows him to give an increased sphere of influence. Whether it be in the business world or and overall in the world of your kingdom to advance in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. Go and be blessed. Go in God's name. Cause Start coming to the LARPA about 5.30. Okay. And then we'll just snack there, and then they're going to cook the shisha nyama for us. I think we'll do it when they come down there. It'll be nice and warm. Okay, then we'll pray for them. Also, just an announcement, I met Moses now, everybody's driver. So CJ gets to be the first one, but I said, can you give us five minutes because we need to lay hands and pray for CJ. He said, well, please pray for me too. Oh. He's got a lot of rides today and whatever. So this is my exhortation to you that every one of you that gets a ride with him, give him a prophetic word. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>